they, uh, when they came back, uh, they celebrated with champagne, Quaker oats, and milk. Meanwhile, the winter jobs got underway, and uh, they mend their socks, prepare their sledges, etc. And this is uh, a couple of people uh, on the crater. There were five in the end. One had to uh, go back and have his, actually some of his toes amputated, Brock of house. Now, they went to look at the old discovery hut, which is all looking a bit shook at that stage, where Chapman had been uh, in, with Captain Scott. And they got the motor car going, uh, 12 to 15 horsepower, air-cooled, obviously. And the idea then was to pull stores, depots, and set up these depots at intervals towards the South Pole in advance, and then the main expedition would leave. But this is probably, this is what usually happened, the narrow wheels. But it was the first sort of motorized transport on the continent, which was, of course, developed and improved on later. Uh, they had the dogs, the pups, and they had the ponies. And here's Shackleton at Cape Royds in 1908. Uh, the winter activities, one of which was to produce the first book published, well, not offered for sale, printed in Antarctica. Um, and here's the printing press. And this is the book they used, the bookends. They used bits of their Modesta packing cases, like um, tea chests. Uh, this is the kidney suit one. And this is owned by Cecily Shackleton, who was Ernest Shackleton's only daughter. The interior of the hut in the 1970s. When I was at Ohio State University, quite a few people were going down this. I got some photographs then, but it's since been restored, uh, supported partly by the Irish government, I have to say, but also by the New Zealand Antarctic Heritage Trust and obviously other uh, groups such as Quark Expeditions uh, to restore the huts, which was the first of the three huts they had restored. And here is um, the, and uh, this is King Edward, Queen Alexander. She was a great, uh, very, very much taken with Shackleton. Uh, I don't know whether it's a coincidence, but. Chapman's granddaughter is called Alexandra as well. No blood connection, of course. Um, and then they had indoor concerts and outdoor concerts. And of course, you know what type of penguin that is. The Delhi, this might be either a slightly deaf one or, or is uh, interested in music. And I can't believe this is going around at 78 RPM. Anyway, the diversions. Some people prefer to read in bed. This is Marston, the artist. Good way of getting more wax in your ears. <laughs> and you had your bath. So they prepared the ponies. There were some problems with them, and they ended up there were four for the southern journey, which started at 10 a.m. Usually things start at 10 a.m. and 29th of October 1908. The four that went south were Shackleton, Adams, Wild, Frank Wild, and Marshall. The journey south didn't start very well. At lunchtime on the first day, Adams was kicked on the kneecap to the bone. 5th of November, so they started on the, on the 29th. 5th of November, um, uh, they were having trouble with the ponies. 21st of November, the first pony was shot, Chinaman, with a revolver three, foot, three inches from the forehead. And they quickly butchered that, so this is going to be a food supply on the way home. This is very exciting for them. 26th of November, further south, new land in the background. And they celebrate it with two tablespoons of curacao each. It falls to the lot of few men to view land not previously seen by human eyes. It's with feelings of curiosity, not unmingled with awe, that we watch the new mountains rise from the great unknown that lay ahead of us. On the oppressed 28th of November, another pony shot. Uh, 1st of December, Quan, who uh, Shackleton's favorite one, was shot. Um, Marshall fell down a crevasse on the 4th of December, but their biggest blow came on the 7th of December, where the last pony, Socks, fell down a crevasse and nearly brought Frank Wilde and Sledge with them. And this is the day when they were actually going to shoot him. The progress through December was difficult because this is when they climbed up uh, from the ice shelf up through this gap here, up the Beardmore Glacier. The Beardmore Glacier rises some 9,000, 10,000, 9,500 feet. It's 125 miles long and 20, 35 miles wide, enormous. And as they went up, each up, then Shackleton then started naming beaches. This is his son Raymond, his wife Emily, his daughter Cecily, etc. as they went up and up. You're not allowed uh, to uh, um, be, um, do things like that now. Anyway, on the 2nd of January, Shackleton wrote, 
I cannot think of failure, yet I must look at the matter sensibly and consider the lives of the, those who are with me. That was the bottom line. 4th of January, 1909, the end is in sight. We are weakening rapidly. It's a serious risk we've taken, but we had to play the game to the utmost, and Providence, let's say God or anything like that, Providence will look after us. Um, on the 9th of January, they left all their provisions and went further south to within 97 miles of the South Pole. The bravest decision Shackleton ever made was to turn back then, I believe, because the lives of the men uh, and his own survival too were more important than the glory and probable death on the way back. Whatever our regrets, we may have, we maybe we've done our best. The highest, coldest, bleakest, windiest plateau in the world. Tonight we celebrated our record with thick hoosh and slow gin. After a 60 hour blizzard, we're not quite feeling up to the mark. And that's what their um, journey up the Beardmore Glacier looked like, which he named for his sponsor. Here is a Marston picture of the Mermaid's Mar socks before the last uh, fall down the class, that's socks. And this is uh, their further south camp on the 8th of January 1909. And here's three of the four. And of course, this is Union Jack, but you do know the Cross of St. Patrick is incorporated in that. At the same time, another group of three. It was David Australian, Mackay, and uh, Douglas Mawson, who had been born in Yorkshire, but was um, in the living and brought up in Australia, one of Australia's finest heroic age explorers and geologists, reached the South Magnetic Pole, which is on the land. They did huge sledging over 1,000 miles in 122 days. Just think of it. David. And they did 